Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vukayu Gameplay channel. And in this one we have the first Echo game without first strike as a default room because they just nerfed that bonus damage from 10% to 9%, which means less coin for your Witcher, but we're seeing blue canes and echoes go back to a Dark Harvest rune set, which has still been good, always has been good, always will has had have been good, but the first strike was just giving you so many riches and so much damage, you couldn't pass it up really. Now we're going back to the Dark Harvest a little bit. It's still going to be good on first strike, but they're really trying to rein in this rune as a de facto assassin rune, you know, because really it was just so, de it's still so default, so abused, and with Treasure Hunter giving snowballing champions such a window into the future almost, you know. And uh, with Echo, obviously in this video, you'll see with the runes, we're still going with Treasure Hunter, we're still taking ahead that 550 cash monies that we can use for itemization to sno snowball because Echo Jungle is still good, Echo Jungle is still viable, and Echo Jungle is OP under the radar, and by that I mean not actually OP, but definitely a viable strong jungler you can use to carry your games, no stress. And do not forget, if you want to learn all about the different kinds of jungling and laning techniques you need to carry in League of Legends as we head towards the end of Season 12, I am having a Gosu Bootcamp with Coach Kybert coming up August 22nd for the first uh, that week and plus the first week of September. And um, please, see the end of the video for full description, all the details on your screen now, link in the description below as well. And with that said, let's go back into our game here. We have ourselves a GG Easy Diana game, right? She is against us. Now, typically with Echo, you're not gonna match in literally any environment or reality the full clear speed of a Diana. We have your Volibear top lane. This is ballsy considering the last round of nerfs. Um, definitely the Volibear nerfs were hit, you know, it affected him way more top lane than it did in jungle. Now, if Diana starts here, gets Alicia, you know, could she show up here with a level three gank to try and get ahead of you knowing you're gonna be trying something else as Echo? Potentially. Potentially, but you know, most likely she's going to be full clearing and then eating onto the top side. And uh, the Ash Hawkeye will do, or Hawk Shot will do all the work. We, as Echo here, I love having a red side clear into some kind of action. Um, you know, if the enemy jungler starts here and is coming down, this is crucial. You see the Volibear move down and come back up. You want to time that. If he's gone for, you know, 20 odd seconds, okay, he probably went and warded really deep in my jungle. And that's something that, that we can use to track now. So. Keep an eye on this. You see, I was talk explaining it with something else. All of a sudden, I saw that Volibear and I, I click have a look. We know that the Dyna's going up, but if the enemy jungle is going down and you're starting here with Echo, you can definitely three camp and, and get some sort of action first. You know, it's definitely something you can do. Um, but otherwise, I do prefer a more five campy existence when you're a bit unsure about enemy jungler power things and so on, purely because. You know, you're not going to match the tempo at all, but in this situation, you know the Dyna's going up, you know the Volibear used that prio, you know, bot lane's kind of disappeared, chunked reset, so we can go ahead and take this, you know. If the enemy bot lane is, vis is visible here, they chunk your bot lane, they use their prior to move into the river, you're probably going to lose this crap to them, specifically your Nautiluses and Threshes and so on, but otherwise, yes, we can afford to do the, the Krug, get level 4, we can scan, great job to scan here, um... With Echo, you know, I, I usually don't like getting the scan of first base anymore, but you're not going to be that farming jungler that can match that, you know, so being able to know what I'm seeing and not seeing is most important. Now, here's very, very good. We see bot lane show up. We're taking that bottom scuttle, obviously a little bit slower than most meta junglers, which puts you in a position where the enemy bot lane probably didn't expect. You see the Diana here was ganking mid lane, so it's almost split. Where do I click? And now we have the Silas and the Diana chasing our Galio, and what we can do is collapse on this. Now, if bot lane isn't gankable, dead, doomed, useless, you now can rotate to this 2v2 and affect it. And if you can kill her, waste a little bit of time, and this Grum spawns and she's dead, you might even be able to smite and eat this um, and steal it. But I think in this situation, better just to base, let her fall up to a Grum. Most likely she will go ahead and do that, at this, but at the same time, you don't know, you know. Is she going to stay out and do a full second rotation? Is she going to do Grump Blue, uh, Grump Wolves, reset and then go back to the bottom lane looking for Drake Prior? You're not entirely sure exactly what she's going to be doing, but you can see it from this dead ward, this little pebble, little tiny pebble, that it was watered by Volibear, so you know that that is down. But always keep track of the, the top laners with Prior who move and keep going back because you don't want to go and try and gank it, ganking top lane, imagine, and, and be spotted, you know, especially with deep wards where they can see you. So here he shows up. If he has a control ward and he disappears and places it, you can also press tab. Press tab, you see volley, control ward. He disappears, comes back, you press tab again, no control ward. He placed it. And you can do that on anyone, so that's why we press tab a lot. But I think here, this is standard stuff with Zeko. Would we like an early gank first? 
Yes. Do we have that? Yes. Would we like potentially maybe a kill or two from another skirmish, another game free six? Of course. But if we're against a farming jungler and we have this lead where we can get a dark seal, and you can get a blasting one and things like that. Yes, we can. De we definitely want to roam and use that advantage to, to, to make sure we can get six as soon as possible. Now, Silas here is very, very low. Well, <laughs> he's half HP for Kaya. My, my brain is freezing from the lack of sleep. And, uh, you know, the 530 waves arrived, which means he's going to be very damn close to six. And, you know, if he's positioned a little differently, we can definitely go for this. I would like to kind of go for this um, before he hits six, you know, because if he hits six as you're ganking and he eats your ult and he eats Yali's ult, it could be really, really difficult to, to gank. So unfortunate positioning there, but we do have a good ward. We see the Nautilus Rome and we can go ahead and snack ourselves this juicy crow camp. Now, if Diana did, in fact, do the Gromp and the Wolves and the Raptors and into the Krugs and Reset, we don't know exactly what she did, right? But if we see her with 44 CS showing anywhere, specifically topside, we know that she did another full clear of a jungle up. So she shows up instead with 40 CS and ganking this, of course, Gala is going all alpha aggression against the Silas. I do enjoy watching a Silas die. Uh, Galio should fall as well. Oh, don't worry, I'll reverse back to this. And now because we kind of... We're a little bit behind in terms of uh, absorbing experience. We don't quite have that level six. The Q doesn't quite hit, but it does hit on the way back. The W hitting is the main thing because 2.25 seconds stun. Excellent. So when a support goes into the river here, right, and then walks back down and they don't have flash, abuse that. Look to collapse on those angles. Here, if you're really close to six, just hold um, your, your position as close as possible to the minion wave. And now we've moved on up to the dragon here, but we saw the Diana. You know that she's going to come on down to the suspecting this. Your, your ADC is not rotating, only your support is rotating. You know I don't really like doing these dragons unless we have 100% pride, but at the same time, why is Diana fully contesting this it, it, way before anyone shows up? She goes in for the ultimate here, but Echo does have ult, goes for the EQ first. She's now forced to flash out, she does get uh, exhausted, she's forced to go in and now and smite that. She gets killed from this, Galio ults in here. We do have the Nautilus and the Galio um, fighting, well the Galio is fighting everybody. We're keeping our spacing to avoid the dragon kind of... Killing us, mm. all round a bit of a fiesta. No, definitely something reminiscent of most of your games, which is great. Do we really want to go for this? <sighs> Watch the W though. Watch the W though. <laughs> He's trying to get in Q ranges, Galio. Mm. Do we want to? Excuse me. Hold on a second. All right, keep keep going the fiesta. The gold lead is still pretty close here. Oh, the Silas, man. He's just trying to get that W. Okay. So you make this great play bottom lane. You see Dana moving down. You know Silas has TP will move on over as well. You're basically saying, hey, let's just 4v4 this and see what happens. I'm not a huge fan of that in general. I would rather look to perhaps 1v1 contest, especially if I can beat the enemy jungler, or just play it a little safe. You know, you can always reset and then kind of red quadrant again can counter gank bottom lane. She's going to sequence up again, and now this would definitely be way more free. And obviously, the, they, it takes a lot longer to to kill those dragons now as well. So you do want to be cautious um, when you make those plays. I think a little bit aggressive on that call from everyone involved, but overall it works out okay for the blue team. I think the Fed Zaya will enjoy that. So if you have a good ADC duo you're playing with, then you know that they can get fed from the shore. Now, Diana in this situation, we can assume has two options. She can take this, counter jungle this, and fall back to this, or go straight to this, or she can just carry on sequencing standard. We, we really don't know. So the Ash Hawkshot didn't provide us as much value as we probably wanted. Echo has decided not to focus on the bottom side there, bringing the Raptors as he finishes the red, unfortunate reset. And now, of course, we can loop on over and take this, assuming at this point, we don't know, like Pryo disappeared. Is this all just being taken? You see the pings? Uh, again, roaming in the river by the enemy bot lane, using that, that Tristana uh, Nautilus threat to really push into the river th for the roams, but I had a coaching session just today with a jungler repeat gank bottom lane going the same direction six times. You know, the same thing with, with even high yellow roamers. They just take the same path. It's really predictable. Good job by the Olaf here to kind of sort of respect the, the Nautilus, but he then, well, the new ult's not going to help him here. <laughs> <laughs> Old alt was better there. That's kind of expected. You obviously saw the ding from the, 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 the rift tail being secured. So we're going to go ahead and take this dragon. This is a case of, hey, look, she's on the map first. She's going to sequence first. Uh, let me just take my red quadrant and look for the bottom lane dragon. And now we can make an equal and opposite play on the bottom side. This is what Echo's great at. And look at this. We're equal in gold now. How can we kind of take this to the next level? I don't think checking for these camps is 100% necessary, though. I mean, it's kind of obvious that she did that, particularly when she'll show top here without a red. You know, which means you know her red is still up and she hasn't taken it. Uh, 
<laughs> Who's upset? I'm upset. This guy's upset. You know, if, if you have crucial god automation, sure. But that RNG crab with giga value, and then of course you can rotate here if you don't need to base. Uh, I do understand why we base to kind of hold the top lane there, but I kind of like taking that crab anyway. Making sure that we can potentially finish off our itemization uh, just for some river control. Then you can collapse into the mid lane, but overall we base, we come back out of base, and now we move into this fight. And this is the crucial thing here, right? Everyone has moved except for the Zaya, so the fact that we're here is, is, is really, really big. Regardless of how you get there, make sure you do get there, yeah? Because this is now a really big push for the second tier. Could have probably just taken this, though. I mean, because in my point of view, there's no reason for us to be up by the Wolves. Essentially, if we know, if like, if the Grop is down and not takeable, then we know that the Wolves won't be because she's sequencing. Thus, the time is wasted. We could just do this. Um, maybe I'm being greedy for the, for the crab there, and we just want to rotate and get to this fight, but... 100% 204, 6 out of 9 KP, we got the dragon, we did lose all the plates top lane, we're clearing some vision, as long as we're present, that's fine, and I think most Echo players will agree, if you're down, like 5 CS to a Dino, we'll, we'll take those, we'll take those, you know. She does have her rocket ball completed though, we're again rotating to the mid lane, we'll chuck out a Q and a W for a little bit of zoning, and now of course, Volibear's in the bottom lane, we're not close to 9, so you want to make sure you're keeping your eyes up on the mid lane here, 100%, 100%, as you farm, now remember, as you go inside out, you're looking more to collapse and help the bottom side here versus helping mid, especially if mid wants to base. If you want to help the mid lane, you're going to kind of shadow that. But we're just focusing on a little bit of our own experience here. Again, deep vision by the Volibear. Uh, Dinah shows here most likely yeeted out Gromp as well if that was up from our POV. You know, um, we can see that she didn't, but, you know, in game, I'm pretty sure most of us would think if she shows up here, probably warded our jungle and, and there's nothing we can do about it. Right, let's go get our... Let's go get our rocket belt. There we go. Right. Rotate to the fight. Four people around mid. Volibear collapsing in from the bottom side. So far, so good. A little bit of an equal game. You know, we're slightly ahead. I think at this point, we need to use the fact that we are super fed. Okay. Gato's ulting the bot lane. We're moving to the bot lane here. We're going to keep our Olaf alive. Not that he really deserves it. And we're going to kill the Volibear. Nicely done. The name is unfortunate. Please seek out help instead. Now the Nautilus moves on to, to try and help. That key was... Uh, this is not it. All right. So Dinah's going in big, 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 big. We're using ult for damage. All right. We're flashing to respace again. We want to try and get... We do have our Q plus our W active. We use our movement speed as well. Here we go. Yep, yep. Place it. Let's see. Boom. We just kill him even without it. And we stun the Nautilus. Double kill. Queen's applause. Everybody, please. Queen's applause. Very, very nicely done. This is something I love doing. I love champions that can hold their own tower and kill people as they dive me. Things like Zyra, things like Echo, a Rost as well, you know, that could work. I know this has been a long time since I played it. Those kinds, of, I love being able to turn fights. I guess champions that can turn fights are extremely satisfying to watch. Hit the X. Hit the X. <laughs> <laughs> he was just doing a little bit of bait. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, that was almost a prey error from across the, <laughs> across the map there. Now, uh, we do have Rocket Belt. We're going to go into the Lich Bane. Obviously, the classical Echo things with the uh, Spell Blade. Then. Do miss the old Sheen, though. I will say that. Now, this kind of game's been quite messy. You know, but we, of course, now have the Protoball Active that we can combine with our E. We've still got our Flash as well. You've got your Slow Field on the Q. And that 2.25 seconds done on the W is absolutely huge. And because of the amount of gap closing we have now, which is why this itemization is so good, you're just going to become such a single target monster, even without having first strike, the Dark Harvest 11 stacks will, will do damage, you know? And um, look for those flanks now. Remember, Diana is way squishier than she would be if she built that Sunfire. That, that's worth noting, okay? And we do have a Fed ADC, so you can obviously use that, that, that Parallel Convergence for peel as well. I know it's great to go and assassin or someone, but if you need to use it, just slap it on your carries. As they dive you, Diana and Volibear dive you, you can do huge amounts of peel with that. Now we have cleaned up our vision here, and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and snack this dragon. You do have to be a little bit, you know, just show some caution here as the shield's starting to get giga huge. We have 10 stacks of that dark seal. We do have the second herald spawning, so you're basically willingly giving that up through that second dragon. I think I would have liked not to have given up the first. Herald, but I think that's a lot to do with the fight we chose to have here around this. I feel like we could have played that a little better where we might be able to get the first dragon and the Herald and begin the objective ping pong, but 
it played out the way it played out. We tried to make that play and it was great for our, our game state, you know. Ash Arrow across the map straight into the Diana. The Gallo fearing over the wall here, or taunting, should I say. W again using max range. Now that basically is a zoning field. We can go in and kill the Silas. Nautilus is by himself, flashes up to the Volibear. Volibear fl flows on in with his E, misses his E. Diana's using Protobot trying to poke from the range. Sorry, the side. Doesn't really do anything. Volibear's way too deep. Nautilus in the back of the pit. He's gonna get chonked. And that's why Echo is so damn good against dive comps, because you separate the whole team. You separate the whole team. I love it. I love it. I mean, I have 300,000 on Echo. I, I mean, I did play him in Season 6 and Season 7 primarily, and I, of course, used him um, at that time in mid lane as well. Uh, I mean, I played him, like, mostly jungle, 99% jungle, but I did do a bit of a, a big climb with mid lane back in the day with uh, Echo... Teleporting Grump with Echo and um, Valkaz. And obviously Zyra, because you could do that back then. You know, you could play things like, like Zyra mid lane. I missed that. But the Echo mid you know, there was a tech where you would take Spell Thieves mid just to get passive gold so you could rush that death cap. Was it good? <laughs> it was a different time, I'm gonna say. It was a lot of damage. There's a lot of damage, you know, but and those different skins. Death Cap was different back then. Everything was different back then. It was one of those really heavy snowballing builds, and you'd always end up doing something, but um Yeah, that's such a long time ago. Again, we're throwing out the W here, moving into their jungle. Really, really good. The Dyna going pr uh, uh, <laughs> nice old. The Dyna going into Rocket Belt here is, is huge for me. I don't know why you would do that at all. Sunfire is still absolutely correct. Please do that. Tristan is jumping in here, trying to kill the Galio to get the resets. Isn't able to do so. We are going to use our Parallels Convergence. Remember, we hit that there. Nautilus going in. If he moves forward, he's going to get stunned. We're just going to kill him instead. Azaya kills the Diana, who again, suboptimal bolt here. Forced to play the Echo's game. We love to snowball. We love to skirmish. We love to snowball. And you're not going to do that by FK farming in your jungle. So get on the map, ladies and gentlemen. Get on the map. Make the right fights. Well, it was close. Now, we've taken that in hip. Now, if you're going to do this, you see people always say, well, how do I close these games but as, as, as like an echo or snowballing jungler? Look, this is a really early in hip, but look at their team. They have no wave clip for this. We are so far ahead at this point. 7k gold just from, right? Just from that 12-minute fight where we got these kills, we base and we got this. You know, we used that to get a dragon to really push up the map, and it was huge in getting us ahead. And this collapse on the Volibear here was, was big too, but every fight we've had, the Echo has thrived with his W, just contorting the entire fight, making the enemy team go, well, I can't move. If I move, I get stunned. And in the meantime, the rest of the team gets killed. I love it. It's great. That's why Tank Echo, that's why Tank Echo, while not healthy for the game, was beautiful. Because your engages and the way you could position and peel and engage at the same time was just so damn satisfying. Nautilus going on a free roam adventure, who knows why. Now, there's two inhibs down, and they're not gonna have the wave clear to deal with that necessarily, which means you're gonna wanna try and push up here, really shove in this third inhib. Usually, you know, there's someone with TB can go bot lane here just to depressurize it a bit, to force a bit of wave pressure. You can go here, because Baron's not on the table, you know, then if they walk through here and take Baron, yeah, you guys probably deserve to lose. Can we take two people on his Echo? Yes. So we're going to basically go in here. Galley's going to ult us. Volibear's going to ult to make sure he can suppress and then kill that tower. We're going to use ult to just one-shot the... Not one-shot, but kill the Nautilus. We reposition with our E and smack back in to get that kill. And that's great. You know, now we can push this up. This should be pushed up as well. And this will be pushed up. And that's exactly what you're looking for. But because you got three bot lane, you might have a, like a 3v2 collapse in your bot lane. But I think a fed ADC with an Ash should be pretty self-sufficient. But all you're looking to do is push this up again, steal this, push this, seek across, join them here. Let's see what we do. Because that's it. That's how you close these games out. You go around the world, you take those two early inhibs, and you keep the pressure up. The problem comes into the... The problem happens when you, you go back to farming your jungle now. Ah, let me do a full sequence, yes, and take this one, yes. And your whole team's trying to push, die, they're feasting off the super minions. You know, you gotta keep using that lead to kill people. Again, Diana gets stunned. I don't think she knows what day it is, but I love Echo's damage. Let's main rock about... Magi stacks, Solstra boots, just run them down. Like when you have this lead, how many of you have this lead on Echo and don't just run into their base? Now you can say, well, like I have a great Galio, but we're 18 of 26 KP. We have like 69, 70% KP. Um, you know, the same farm as a Diana and uh, woo, and a perfect game. And our ADC was just 4-0-4 in the end and just started hitting turrets. So this is a great example of perfect Echo skirmish snowball game. 
I, do, I have a very, very, very long Echo game. I think I have two super long Echo games. So I didn't want to do another super long Echo game. If you search the channel for Echo Jungle, you will see we've talked about mid game and late game in different realities. Um, but I thought, hey, let's, agree. let's have a look at this one. Le replays are a little limited on the first day of the patch as well. But let's have a look at this one just to see how we deal with, you know, the expectations. And it was a bit more coachy, but hopefully you enjoyed it on something. Please do let me know what other champions you would like to see. Let me know how you're doing. How are you? Are you feeling good? Type it in the comments. Um, Bootcamp, links in the description. Zada GG, guys. Links in the description. Echo coming very soon for that as well, by the way. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.